Hello my dear YouTubers, I know I sound terrible and I'm copying all these city orchids right now but nothing else is actually coming to my mind just to say hello and welcome to my channel. Um, as you can see my beautiful orchid next to me, the only one which is actually in bloom, oh no wait that is a lie, that is not the only one, I'll show you another one in a second. Today I would like to talk to you about orchids and especially plug plants which is a type of a a bit younger seedling than normally you can get in shop and nurseries and are quite widely available here in the UK sometimes you can get them also in the Europe I don't know how if you can get them in the States or not and anywhere around Europe and Canada, probably probably Taiwan and China and Japan. I did see some stuff like that. Anyway, most of the time when you received your lovely plug plan, it is a tiny tiny orchid which is packed in spagn either sphagnum ox or cork, which is terrible. Packing uh, those little orchids in cork is terrible because Removing the cork itself takes at least half an hour of just scraping, scrubbing, kicking, yelling and crying and soaking it in water till it actually gets soft enough to peel off. But it also the problem is because the roots grow into the cork so hard it is it can happen that you're going to snap the roots just by trying to remove a tiny bit of cork that looks totally innocently to you. Anyway. Upon receiving a seedling, the plants are usually quite young and they are said to be, well, two or three years from blooming, which on occasion I do think it's a bit of an exaggeration or more a bit of a lie because depending on the species and on the types, some orchids can be far away as six to eight months from blooming even I must say and I'm going to start with showing my first orchid which is this beautiful Miltonopsis Hera Alexander which I p purchased the pl uh, plug plant from Ray Cree Orchids which I'm going to add the link to the description which has this because it is a Miltonopsis and I'm quite unfamiliar with this type of the orchids and they're quite annoying because you have to water them often and when you water them often you end up having a massive plague of fungus gnats which are terrible because they fly everywhere and you just see them and you're like I must kill you and you too oh and you too oh you you oh uh, like everywhere so you end up spending money buying uh, uh, insecticides and stuff like that or just pitcher plants another weird thing just to get rid of them and they never die or if you have another different house plants they always will spread and they always will be there even if you boil and you just spray your soil or your potty mix with everything to kill those little pesky things they will always come back don't worry, they will. They will always be there. Best friends forever. Anyway, um, with this Miltonopsis, I've noticed that I had it for well, roughly around seven months. After a month, uh, the plug plan started sending its second growth, which is this one, which is a quite nice sized, sized one right now. I do have some um this gives me wrinklage on the leaf because obviously at the beginning I didn't really know how to deal with them and I packed my Miltonopsis into normal chunky uh potty mix. After two three months I've noticed those leaves and I was like oh well tough luck happens but then after another month I bought some more potting mix and because I had a small obsession about cymbidiums back then the potting mix was a bit more um, chopped in in pieces so half of the mix was like really really big chunks and half of it was like smaller and actually looked like just like 
the coconut husk was chopped into bits and it was just like the hairs and threads and everything. So I just decided I'm going to top all the roots in here and cover them with that sphagnum moss so that I kept the moisture and right now it's growing really nice and besides those funny little wrinklage thing it's it's gone. Anyway, um it is my will be going to seven, eight month now, probably it's eighth month. And it's sending its first flower spike. So I could say it might depend on the species, it might depend on the hybrid or the genus, but some orchids will not flower from two to three years, that is just terrible. But they might flower within 12 months from you actually getting your first seedling. So, or well, I'm just having like magical green fingers, which would be amazing. Yay, me. Or just the environment, which would be even, well, yay me, because that's not possible, the temperature, we never have any heating in here, and it's like, in winter the temperatures drop down to 12 degrees in the house, because why waste electricity if you're living between two bathrooms, like bathroom on one side, bathroom on the other side, people turn the shower on, and suddenly my room is like 25 degrees at the evening, anyway, and yeah. So, coming back to your seedlings and plague plant, seedling and plague plant, it's probably similar. Um, some might get to bloom quite early, but I have another one, which is a slightly younger brother here, which is our uh, Miltonopsis Newton Falls, and, and I had this one for two months now, and you can see here, yeah, you can see here, there is this little lovely growth and it's literally within a week, it grew like two inches by now. It's just appeared from nowhere and it's like, ooh, I'm here, I'm going to make a lot of trouble. But, this is my pride and joy, uh, this is the Bellara Peggy Roof Carpenter Morning Joy and it is a quite big orchid, forgive me the white spots, it is not disease, nothing, it is just me using the insecticide to spray the top of the medium to kill any bugs in there and then I'm washing it and it's just annoying. Anyway, it, 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 I think it's ending, yeah, it's bloom, It's you can see the blooms are ending right now and it's slowly dying, I'll have to report it soon. Because it's been in this medium for what? 18, 17 months? Something like that. Anyway, um, the flower when it came in, it had only this back bulb and this new growth, which was quite tiny, and it grew quite quickly, especially in winter. But then it grew and it started growing this, these big two new side bulbs, which took a proper year to just get to the size of sending a flower spike. So before this this orchid decided to actually start blooming, it was already 16, 16, 17 months. So it took a long time for it to wake up compared to this Miltonopsis. And uh, I can say because it's just one flower, so I always heard that an orchid to bloom needs to, especially if it comes to the ones that have bulbs, they need to have three, bul uh, the three bulbs and the third one is going to send its first flower. Well, with this one I can say it's not true because it had three bulbs already and the third one skipped it turned bloom and the fourth one then just bloom. So, I'm hoping that after this one, I'm not going to have any skippage, so it's going to be blooming every blue bulb, can't talk, uh, every bulb afterwards. But, also, as I said before, it is up to the species and the hybrid and the type. Like, you can see this lovely Wilsonara Carmel Gold, which is I have absolutely no idea what is this. I bought it because, um, let's see, I'm stupid and the pictures did look nice 
And I thought to myself, well, why not? Because I'm silly like that. But hey, I had it for a month now, and it's already sending another growth round here. Plenty of new roots, and it seems to be doing quite good, but I'm not expecting this flower plant, this orchid, which is quite tiny. And I did see different species of uh, different hybrids of wool sonaras, and I know the pseudobulbs and the bulbs are quite big. And some of them are literally the size of my palm. And those are like the size of the head of my thumb. So it's not going to happen for this for at least a year and a half. Saying that it is possible that a tiny plant like this might send some flowers. Uh, also, I do have another Bellara, which is this one, which is the Bellara homoglacia, which is everyone loves. We all love this plant. It's like in the UK. For Christmas, you have those sections with amaryllis, um, uh, can't talk, too much on the phone today with the customers. And on the other hand, you have the Bellarat homoglacia, which is lovely because you have so much of them. Oh, and then eventually you have like one or two fowls and maybe something else. And she's like, yeah, because it looks so Christmassy, I don't know why. But I decided to buy it because I thought to myself, I already have the Peggy Roof Carpenter, so I might have the white one and also I do love growing ceilings because I'm weird like that and I know people don't have the patience because it's like, oh, waiting for it, it's too much of a hassle but the beauty of growing a seedling is that you can actually have a plant which you are sure or not sure that you've grown it properly so if it blooms then it's like a reward for all of your efforts and time and patience and the catastrophes and drama and everything that you went through and actually will bloom on you like uh, thank you for not killing me yeah so I also had this for roughly a month and a half and it's, this growth here is already this size and it was tiny it was like literally like a tiny tiny two inch growth and suddenly just sprouted and I was really worried because when it came it had some uh, I don't know if it's water damage or or some other it had like a black spot on the leaf but it looks like this root spot or something like that didn't really stop it from growing it is standing on my uh on my bookshelf stand just next to the light i'm using to grow seedlings because uh, my room is a uh, southeastern room so i don't get proper like what's that semi-direct direct light till around something between 3 and 4 p.m up to well night time so my plants are in this comfortable position that they don't get burned but they do get this nice comfortable and warm evening sunshine so and besides it's quite bright here anyway so it's like semi-direct it's not really direct it's like indirect light yeah coming from outside not too much not not too, too small yeah so um but I also have two other seedlings, which one is a seedling of a, oh God, oh God, it's a Cattleya type, and I'm going to actually read this. Um, oh, okay. Burkleriara, Miyuki Little King, crossed with Prostachea Vitellina Konya, whatever. I'm not very good in reading names like that, if I haven't practiced for several hours before. Anyway, this seedling is around, will be three months old now, with me. Um, so far, the only thing that actually happened in here, it sent two roots. So that's not good. I'm really sorry for that. Uh, we had some technical difficulties in here. Well, um... To be honest, it wasn't a technical difficulty because I'm uh, I'm really stupid. So doing my first YouTube video, I put my camera settings on super 
full HD so everyone can see every single pimple on my nose. Yeah, I do come in Blu-ray if you ever wanted. Anyway, coming back to this orchid. Yeah, I never had any experience with Cattleyas before. I am going to have two, probably three more. Saying that, I have no more space, and as I mentioned, I don't have, or probably didn't mention, because it was already cut off by the lack of memory on my my camera, that I don't have any more space on my windowsill. But I did, this cat layer, for the last three months, it only grew two roots. It probably did grow some more roots inside. I don't really know when it is going to start blooming. It has one, two, three, four bulbs and grows and it doesn't look like it's doing anything else for me right now. It is growing those roots, they are looking lovely as roots can lovely be, I prefer the foliage but it's not happening, I don't really know, it might take another year for anything to happen if you do have any experience with that please do write me a comment because I would love to know if this could like, oh yes it, it is an amateur cross from Orchid and Royal Key or LK, or I don't even know how to read them, they're a weird name. And I do know German quite well because my family does come from some parts of Germany, so I do have, wouldn't have problems, but they're really weird. It's like whatever, real key. Maybe that's like Dutch or something. And yeah, also I do have this lovely seedling. Yeah, this is a seedling. Look at that, yeah, it is, it, it is massive, it is massive, it is big. And basically this one is the Odontonia Sturbig, or Sturbig, I don't know how you should pronounce it, it probably t sounds Germanic to me. Anyway, you have several types of them, this is the 1106, so basically it is supposed to be the deep blood purple one with white patterns. I also know there is the purple one with orange which looks like a tiger and there's also a one which is black with white and stuff like that. Basically I did have this seeding the same time as I did have the Wilsonara and the Milton Yopsis and Newton Falls and this one is growing really really fast compared to both those, well Milton Ups is going quite fast, but this is going really fast, this growth right here, this one, as you can see it is already opening, I can guess within the next 3-4 months I will be able to see the actual bulb inside, I don't know if it's going to actually send a flower, it might not, it might wait for another growth to grow, it does have plenty of room to do that. But this one is just was a tiny little nod in here and within three months it's just when whoa mental I am growing and I'm taking this space. And yeah, I am not really sure how it works with oh that's a weird card. How it works with seedlings. I would love to know your experience because I do like growing orchids from seedlings because it is it is very satisfying to watch them grow and see what happens with them, especially it, because when you buy orchids from from nurseries and other places, you don't, you can't really tell if it's going to come to you in a pristine condition. I had, I did order one orchid, and it was the oh, I can't even remember the name. Wait, please for me. It was the cross of Vulciara Yokara Perfection and Oncidium Leuco, Leuconidium I think, which is the beautiful, beautiful white and pink purplish flowers, which are really amazing. I'm, I'm actually surprised this orchid doesn't have uh, actually an official name. I mean like, wow, you see the flowers and you're like, oh my god. But this orchid when it came to me, it was on a really, really weird and bad shape and it wasn't like because um, the actual nursery owner or the growers in the they didn't care about it properly it is because one of the bulbs uh, the, because the orchid, orchid had three bulbs and one of the bulbs grew on the side of the uh, mature bulb and the second one started ingrowing underneath the actual growth 
So you could see the leaves and everything, but the actual pseudobulb was growing underneath the, the medium, so it started rotting because of the moisture. And I don't know if whoever was doing that didn't just notice that, or the, just the pattern of growth of that plant was just so weird. So I ended cutting the bulbs away and actually it's a miracle has happened and started growing a new little tiny growth so I might be able to save the, the, the rotten one that was growing under the ground like weird but uh, the actual plant which was supposed to be bloom size right now is more like I don't know AR recovery size probably uh, might flower within the next five years if it survives next winter it probably might not survive because it's really weird. But yeah, I I had another plant which was my Papia Pedalum Maudiao Green. And it came as a uh, seedling and it took it a year to get to bloom size. So it probably might have been a bit more mature. And it's right now the plant is massive and it's wonderful. It's just like even even if it's not flowering and now it's flowering again. I mean like the, it's sending another spike and it just bloomed like four months ago and it sent a new growth and the new growth is mature within four months, which is amazing. But yeah, um, I mean. I'd love to know if your experience involves other plants, other, other different orchids. Did you have any experience with orchids of just buying a seedling and then suddenly within a ridiculous amount of time, which is like, well, like, wow, it happened. Yesterday I bought it, two weeks later it bloomed. Well, not literally, but metaphor, metaphor, my dear, my dear watchers. But... If you do, can you name the species? I would love to know, because I might be silly again, I might just fill some more window space. It actually looks really nice when I moved all my plants here, because I can see the windowsill, which is like a nice piece of wood. I didn't notice that for last year, probably, because there's so much pots in there. And it's not going to, it's going to get worse, and I'm probably going to do a clean-up, because... Uh, some of my orchids are dying, and it's not nice. Well, it's not, they're not really dying, but they're not in the best condition. Something happened to them, some are just... It's not neglect, because I care about them, really. And they're just passing away. And like, you buy orchids from the supermarket, and someone... Like this one. This is a rescue -y. Sorry. A rescue with This orchid is a weird one. It is a Phalaenopsis uh, Baldwin Kaleidoscope and it came, I bought it for three pounds. Three pounds, oh yes, three pounds. Because the pot was actually more expensive than the orchid, this was dying. And it was like three leaves here and like one small bud left was two years ago. And I saved it and I bought it and yeah, it was amazing, it started growing back. It has a fragrance which is very uncommon with fowls because hybrids, the shop hybrids, especially to find a registered hybrid in Tesco or Morrison's is like, wow, it doesn't happen often because they're like pink wines and funny ones. But this golden one, it is beautiful and it's been blooming like for two months now and it's sending more flowers. You can see like those little places like they usually die off they don't send flowers but this is sending more and more and more and it's growing new foliage too and it, it's, it's just I love this plant I could like kiss it I actually do kiss it but I'm not going to do it right now but it just has a fragrance I actually posted my query about the fact that my, my random fowl has a fragrance to the European Orchid Forum and they say that it can happen because it can come out because obviously you have the hybrids and the parents might not have the fragments, the grandparents might not have the fragments, but somewhere in the line of this particular orchid, there might have been one parent, a seed or, or whatever, pollen parent, that had a fragrance and this was inscribed in the genetic, 
genes of the orchid and passed for the last 20 like generations and suddenly bam mutation and then appeared in my orchid which is amazing and I'm going to get seedlings for the, of this when when it finishes blooming but yeah um, I hope you enjoyed this video which is my first video and it's probably going to be terrible I hope you t don't tell me in my face it's terrible and I hope to get some more videos, especially when I get my Cattleyas. I'm going to get some more Miltonopsis because Ray Creek Orchids, which is one of my favourite nurseries, and Weakman, which uh, Danny from Miss Orchid Girl, she said she had a problem with the delivery. I never had any problems with them and they are really, really lovely people. The orchids I had from them, I was so surprised. I mean... I ordered one orchid, a Demaguara Winter Fairy, Winter Wonderland, I think it was, something like that. And the plant was massive. I mean, like, it was like this size, like, wow, super big. And it only costed me, like, 12 euro, which is uh, 8 pounds, probably 7 pounds, something like that. And, yeah, all those pots, and especially if you're buying uh, plastic pots for orchids, they are so ridiculously exp uh, expensive in normal shop, but in Wickman you can buy them for like ooh, 30 p pen that's not pence cents, which in UK pounds would be like I don't know 10p probably ridiculous prices. So yeah, um, and Ray Creek Orchids has wonderful, wonderful seedlings of Miltoniopsis, and I would. I'm going to gladly buy them because I seen one like maroon ones and purple and pink. I mean like who does not like wonderful orchids like Milton Yops and especially this Well I'm really sorry for that. I'm experiencing even more technical problems which is my own fault because I talk too much and yeah my camera just the battery just died. I forgot to charge it. Anyway, if you did like the video, please, uh, if you want, subscribe to my channel and press the like button, which would be very much appreciated. I'm also attach going to attach the link to my blog, which is where I write about different species of orchids and how to care for them. I'm also going to put some updates. I'm hope I'm hoping you guys liked the video, and I hope I did give some tiny boring and not hopefully not instant uh, totally like insignificant information because I'm, I'm I, I guessing there's plenty of more people that know a lot of stuff more about seedlings and plug plants than I do with my humble two years of experience with orchids but hopefully I can use my knowledge and hopefully I can teach you something new and if there is something I've missed or I said something wrong, please write that in my comments and I'll make sure to amend my statement in the future. Okay, thank you for watching and see you in the future. Bye.